Recently we did a video on sequence replication with Multimod. As you might recall if you watched that video, we identified that there are a number of potential intersection points in a sequence where we could insert Multimod to explode it outward. For example, there's the final audio output, the stepped CV output of a sequencer, etc. We went all the way back to the very source, the clock that's driving the sequence copied it out with the multi-mod and used it to drive multiple sequences. This time let's move from what we called level zero to what we might call level one, the gate sequence. Now when the tempo input is in use, the time control becomes a clock divider for the overall amount of time represented by copies at the outputs. So with longer times and differing spreads, we can have the different channels respond to changes at the input at varying rates, with some of them still making their way through older material while others start to incorporate the new. But let's get into it. We'll clock Renee's X clock with channel 2 of Tempe, which is set to a times 4 for what we might think of as a 16th note. We'll use a divide by four or whole note from channel one to clock the multi-mod. Now what this means is that now we use the time control to set a division of this clock. So for example, I've set it to 12 o'clock and we're getting, I think, divided by eight. So in this case, eight times through this 16 step sequence is how much it's copying. What are we copying, by the way? Let's copy the X gate output, which will send a series of gates per sequence to the multi-mod input to be copied at different rates per channel. Let's clock the Y output, or sorry, the Y clock of the Rene with channel eight of Multimod. And we'll use channels one and seven to clock a couple of math channels. generating notes on the XPO. And the STO. from these maths channels to modulate the timbre of these VCOs. Now let's take another divide by four o'clock, this one from channel three of Tempe, to reset the multi-mod. This will bring the channels back into phase with each other periodically, giving it some element of quasi-repeatability, particularly if we shake up their correlations by modulating spread, which we're obviously going to do. And let's modulate it by uh, clocking Wogglebug with an even slower clock, divide by eight from channel six here. We'll modulate spread with the step CV output. Change up the gate sequence a little so we can hear a different pattern. Note that it takes a little while for that gate sequence that we're putting at the input to update at the output. Now let's pass 
pass that Wogglebug CV through a maths channel first. Because I'd also like to modulate the length of these triggered functions based on the speed of the channels that are triggering them. Take the variable out from the maths channel, set negative, alt that. Meanwhile, I'll take the regular positive output to the spread. that negative version to the fall time on the left channel. Now that will mean that lower Wogglebug values, which will slow down this channel since it's from a top row on the multi-mod, the lower values will result in longer note envelopes to match, and then we'll also invert the signal again in maths channel three and use that to modulate the fall on the right channel, which is being triggered by channel 7 from the bottom row of Multimod. That sounds complicated. I actually spent about 10 minutes just deciding and discovering how to do this while I was setting this patch up. I've just spared you the boredom of watching me figure it out again. But basically what this is doing is allowing us to get longer notes whenever the respective channel slows down or in other words, when we have a longer time between notes. Let's add one more voice. We'll use Multimod's output three. trigger this other math channel. And we'll sequence this other STO with the Cartesian channel of Rene. Now, since these channels of multimod are constantly moving at different speeds, changes in the gate sequence will start to appear in the multimod outputs at different times. Let's just take a few minutes to slowly change up the gate sequence and hear the results. Clusters of gates will sound different at different speeds. There come the clusters.
also get variations by changing the timing of these tempi channels. For example, how fast the overall clock to the multi-mod. In other words, how much time it copies, how often it resets, how often it pulls a new spread value from the woggle bug. This sequence replication is more about utilizing the overall shape of a gate sequence to generate identical overlapping rhythmic lattices at different time scales. In the future we should probably investigate replicating the actual so-called notes of a sequence for overlapping melodies, and perhaps eventually the resulting audio of a sequence for pitch shifted loops. Do you have a favorite way to replicate sequences? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy patching.